In a typical C++ project, people use CMake as a build system generator. It generates make files interpreted by a build system. For example, msbuild for the Microsoft C++ compiler bundled with Visual Studio, or make on Unix-based systems like Linux or Mac. The build system is then responsible for calling the compilers and linkers to generate the final product. Ninja is a popular replacement for make or msbuild. The authors claim that it's faster than both, especially for incremental builds. Let's see if that's true. We will use WX Widgets, a popular multi-platform UI library, as our benchmark, and compile it on Windows, Mac and Linux. First, we need to clone the repository and configure the build. We use the git clone command, remembering to download the sub-modules. Next, we configure the CMake project using the default build system, which in this case is msbuild. This is already a little bit slow, as all these checks actually compile and run mini-programs to gather some information about the system, which takes some time. After the process finishes, we can see it took more than 200 seconds. But that's just a start. Now we need to actually compile the project. We do that by calling CMake with the build option. This particular Windows instance runs on a virtual machine with 4 CPU cores and 8 GB of RAM. It is a little bit slow, but that's a good thing. If there is a significant difference between MSBuild and Ninja, we will be able to see it better on a slower system. The build finished in 5 minutes. Now let's see how Ninja performs. After recreating the directory, we run the configuration process with Ninja as the generator. We can already see that the configuration process is much faster. It took only 30 seconds compared to 200 seconds with MS Build. Let's start the actual build and see how fast Ninja really is. Well, it's still 5 minutes, so while the configuration process was much faster, there was no difference when building the full project. Let's jump to macOS and see how Ninja performs there. First, the configuration using standard Unix make. It took a bit more than 20 seconds. Now the build process. We need to wait a little longer for it to finish. And that's 3 minutes 11 seconds. Now it's time for Ninja. The configuration process took 14 seconds, so it's a little bit faster than make. The build process took 2 minutes and 44 seconds. That's around 10-15% faster than make, which is not a significant difference. Finally, the same benchmark on Linux using Ubuntu and a bit more powerful machine. Seven seconds for configuration. and 1 minute 20 seconds for the build process using make. For Ninja we have 6 seconds for configuration, 1 minute 18 seconds for the build process. So you might conclude that it does not make sense to use Ninja, as it's not really faster than the default build systems on your platform. 
But there is one area where Ninja works much better. Incremental builds. And your project does not need to be huge to benefit from that. Let me explain. In my WX Widgets apps, I've started using fetch content to download my dependencies. This CMake command downloads the source code, builds it, and makes the project's targets available in the current CMake lists file. Now, every time I recompile the project, CMake checks every WX Widgets target. This is totally unnecessary and just makes the build times slower. It doesn't matter if I change anything in my project files or not, the unnecessary dependency checks happen every time. Not so with Ninja. If I don't change my project, there is nothing to do for the build system. And if I do alter one of my files, only that file is recompiled. One more thing before I let you go. If you want to use Ninja, you need to install it first. On Mac, you can use Homebrew. On Linux, it's as simple as running your package manager, for example, apt-get on Debian or Ubuntu. And on Windows, you should already have Ninja installed if you selected C, C++ option during the Visual Studio installation. If not, you can always download Ninja from the official site, unzip the archive and add that location to your path environment variable. And that's it for this video. Thanks for watching.